Good afternoon all. Today I'm going to look at this and this. So this is a BMS. I bought it on eBay. I think it was £21 or something like that. It's a daily BMS. So Dongguan Daily Electronics Co Limited. Uh, this is a LiFePo 4 8S, 8 cells in series, 24 volts, BMS, discharge current 20 amps, charge current 10 amps, with balance. So this has built-in cell balancing, not sure how effective that's going to be. And it has a common port, and I have no idea what that means. Um, this is the 9-way balance charge, not balance charge, but balancing lead well it's also a detecting lead because it detects the uh, voltages of each of the eight cells and if any one of them is lower than the minimum it'll cut off the discharging uh, MOSFET if any one of them is higher than the maximum it'll cut off the charging MOSFET um, this is not a JST XH it looks like two millimeter pitch so is that a JST PH I'll check Yes, pH appears to be the 2mm pitch, so I'm going to plug that into here. Now the only uh, thing I can think of for common port is this. Uh, you can see from my DMM that uh, black on the balance charge lead is, well let's put it on continuity, and so that's beeping, um, is connected to the same point as blue on the high current side and that's B minus that's battery negative well this of course is also battery negative I'll stop that beeping let's put it on ohms um, so these two are connected together internally from there across to there it seems now what about continuity between black and blue um, well it's quite high resistance 16 mega ohms uh, we could try the other way around, I guess. Yes, let's do that. Actually, I'll swap them on my DMM. That's probably easier. So, t'other way around. Oh, that's interesting. That's infinity mega ohms. Uh, try that in diode setting. So, that's OL one way around. Let's put it t'other way around. And it's OL. So... Yeah, definitely no conductivity between these two wires, although one way round there is a measurable resistance uh, as against the other way around. So what I really want to do is switch on the MOSFETs in here to allow charging. Well, that will be from pack negative through to battery negative, so from black to blue. And also switch on the MOSFETs for discharging That'll be from battery negative from blue through to black and out to the load. And I think the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to connect all nine of these leads. Uh, I'm going to solder them to some little solder tags and connect them to the eight cells of my lithium ion phosphate bike battery. I think I've got a funny feeling this is going to be powered from the balance lead and I think if it sees um, a sensible voltage between each of these cables then it will allow the MOSFETs to turn on here and therefore a circuit to be uh, or current to flow from P minus to B minus and also in the other direction if now let's get this right if one of these cells is too high then it's going to turn off uh, charging which means it'll turn off the MOSFET from P minus to B minus. If any one of these cells go below, goes below the minimum, it'll turn off discharging. That's from B minus to P minus. So let's get soldering. Turn my iron on. Solder nine of these little solder tags onto these wires and get them attached to my battery. So tinning the tag. Tinning a wire. Ah, stay there. 
uh, making sure we've got a piece of heat shrink on there soldering the wire to the tag and sliding the heat shrink up over that times nine right here are the nine wires with the solder tags I'll just do the heat shrinking and come back when that's all done right I don't need the high current connections uh, just at the moment so I'm going to take those off being careful not to bridge this wrench or spanner across the terminals now to make this a 24 volt pack I've got to connect the positive point here to the negative point here um, and then my outer positive and negative will be these two so let's get this bolt through there and into there try and do that up such that it doesn't short anything out okay tighten that up and now it's simply a case of getting these nine ring terminals onto my little balance charge studs there uh, all around the pack in the correct sequence most negative is that point there so I'll start with the black and work my way through right halfway through a little more than halfway through that one goes on there which is slightly awkward to get to I'm biasing these upwards so that all the wire is going to come off the top let's tighten that one up again watching for shorts okay next wire is this one which is wire number eight that goes right over to this side where's most positive that's there that's right with the black balance charge lead with these balance I want these ones as well so that I can put my little measuring device on there and uh, these ones of course are for the BMS so let's put that one on there tighten it up and finally most positive is this one which goes on there if I can undo that nut which I can't very easily so let's get some voltage measurements off this balance charge lead first cell 3.3 .3. second cell 6.6 .6. third cell 10 fourth cell 13 16.6 .6, 20 volts 23 volts and 26 volts so they're all in the correct sequence let's plug in the BMS right let's plug it in I've got my DMM on diode um, across this across the black and blue and when I plug this in it should provide a continuity get this the right way around across these uh, output MOSFET switches so let's give that a try and yes it does that goes to zero indicating closed circuit there let's put that there now does this work in both directions so I'll turn these around and yes it does and in continuity mode we get a beep so this has turned on because it can see eight um, voltages across this nine-way cable which are all within spec because these have all settled down I think this one's a lot more charged than this one this one actually hasn't been charged since it came out of the bicycle 
this one I did put on charge and take it all to the top. But that does seem to work. There are no lights on here, which is a, a bit of a shame. Now, this should also be doing its balancing. Um, center balancing is very ineffective on lithium ion phosphate because the curve comes down quite sharply and then it's very flat in the middle. So to try and position all the centers to match is virtually impossible. But it does say it has balancing. I could watch that taking place on these. Um, but it, it's highly likely that this is going to balance incredibly slowly. One thing I could try is detaching one of these balance leads. Let's actually do the one here next to the meter. Let's just loosen it. Because then it should see strange voltages, which it can't make any sense of. Let's take that nut off. Yes, and that goes to OL. So open circuit effectively the BMS, put that back on and yes it closes the switch so let the voltage on here drift to something that isn't within spec, it goes open circuit, put it back on the pack and it goes back to uh, zero volt drop across this switch. Excellent! So I put a little battery checker on these four cells with the five-way balance lead. Yeah, nothing to see there really. They're all 3.34. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, by virtue of the uh, brilliance of this balancing circuit in the BMS. I think they've just settled to that. Um, what I really need to get is my five plus four-way uh, connector to a nine-way and then I can see all the cell voltages on this little checker. Now here's the question. When I charge this pack from solar, and I'm going to use a 60 cell panel because they have an open circuit voltage of about 30 volts. When this connects the solar panel to this pack, which is at about 26 volts, the panel voltage will of course immediately pull down. Do I need a solar charge controller well, I don't think I do, because if you take the simplest form of charge controller, which is pulse width modulation, when the battery pack is below its target voltage, the MOSFET um, for charging is just on 100%. And that will be the equivalent of this switch in the BMS being on. So I think I can take my solar panel and connect it directly across positive of this pack, which I think is there, yeah that's right because that's the link between the two pack halves and um, blue will go to pack negative and then I'll connect the other end of the solar panel, the negative end of the solar panel to um, P minus, black and then when the first of these eight cells reaches top, reaches a voltage beyond which this doesn't like, 3.65 volts for lithium ion phosphate uh, this should switch the MOSFET off, the battery cell voltage will settle down, this will switch on again and will effectively work a bit like a slow pulse width modulation. It'll just switch on and off until, um, well, by virtue of the balancing in here, all the cells reach top, but even then this will just continue to connect when the pack voltage is low and this, or actually not the pack voltage, but the, when one of the cell voltages, well when not any of the cell voltages is over the 3.65 this will connect and then it will disconnect um, when the first of the eight cells goes over 3.65. So I don't think I need a, a charge controller, I think I can connect it straight to the BMS and charge this pack. That'll be the next thing I do. But for this video um, that's all I really wanted to do, just get this uh, BMS connected, understand how it works and get ready for the next stage which is to solar charge this pack. So for the moment, cheerio.